to minister to you something that, that is going to make you think a lot. But I know that sermons always make us think because it changes us. I've never ministered along this line, but it's been in my spirit for many months. And I believe the Lord would have us today to hear this. But I want you to be very careful how you hear. Very careful how you hear. I'm not going to address a humanistic uh, word. I'm bringing you the word of God. I'm not bringing to you a theological study that was done in a back room of a bookstore, but I'm bringing you what was brought in the word of God. There's things that we see in the word that if, if we would understand the word and then with understanding the word, then we, un we would understand the rest. How many people know that you have to see yourself blessed in order to be blessed? If you see yourself always sick and poor and out, then it'll manifest itself out. You got to see yourself. And that's scriptural. It is scriptural by seeing yourself higher than where you are now. See, you have to be able to see yourself the way God sees you. Not like the way the enemy would want you to see yourself or other people or they seeing you. We have to see ourselves according to the word of God. If truly Jesus is your Lord and you're filled with the spirit of God, praying in the Holy Ghost, manifesting the power of God in your life, then you're something different. You're a spiritual being that is strong. You're powerful. You're mighty. And the Bible says we are a special people. We are a people that was once living in darkness, in the world, under the domain of Satan, but now we have been brought into the kingdom of God as priests and kings, and we are special unto him. We are a special race, a special group of people. Amen. That now we have his word in us, his power. So therefore, we see ourselves mighty like he is. Amen? Now notice this. The thing about this is, if you don't see yourself that way and you have all the other, other promises in your heart, then something's wrong. If you have the promises of God in your life and you hold on to them and you believe in them and you live by them, but you see yourself as an outcast, something's wrong with your seeing. Something's wrong with the seeing part. See, it, it, we know that the seeing comes from our senses, right? Now, let me give you an example today, this morning. Good, pure, wonderful example. We were having a wonderful worship. And then the video came and nothing happened. And then Jennifer came back up here and we switched back into the spirit. Did you notice that very clearly? We were in the spirit. And then we kind of got out, out of the spirit to, to see the physical out of our natural eyes to see. But the machine was not working. And so then we immediately, Pastor Christine immediately came and took over the service. And then we started flowing again. Did you? Now, listen to this. Isn't it possible that we switch back and forth? This morning we switched back and forth, didn't we? We switched from the spirit to the natural. Then back to the natural, back to the spirit. And it was done through the scene. We saw that this thing wasn't working, so we immediately went back right into the spirit where we went into the unseen. I want you to get a hold of this. That's what I'm telling you. This message here, you're gonna have to, it's going to have to make you think. All right? So is it possible that there are a people, there are a people that are born-again believers Believe in the word, believe in his coming, believe in the power of God, but yet cannot see. See themselves with that power or see themselves receiving that. 
Are you with me, church? Is it possible? So is it possible that your mind sees? Is it possible that your mind sees? Just like your natural senses, your, your, your five physical senses, they're important. But how many people know that the Spirit of God, it, it works within us, but it does affect our physical senses? The Spirit of God working in us, being led by, we're led by the Spirit of God in us, but it also affects our senses. When we pray in the Holy Spirit, we're praying in the Spirit. But when we pray in English or in our natural language, it affects our senses. We hear, you, you see, you, you, you understand. But when we pray in the Spirit, it, it's invisible. It goes into in the, the invisible part. But yet your senses do not see that. But your spiritual eyes see what the invisible has. You see what I'm saying? Invisible sees the invisible, and the physical sees the, inf the physical. But the invisible can affect the physical. Invisible can affect what we see. Like today, we were worshiping God, and we moved into a different format to see a video, and the video didn't work, and we're like there, and what happened? We switched back into the Spirit. Why? Because we, need, we knew that the Spirit of God was more powerful than the physical senses. Seeing in the Spirit is greater than the physical seeing. But we're a spirit we have a body, we have a soul, and we operate in our senses. You're looking at me through your senses, but inside of you there is a spiritual eye that is seeing greater things. Hallelujah. Amen. Inside of you is a spirit man that sees through the mind of the spirit. Hallelujah. Even though your senses see me, but inside of you you're seeing something. So is it possible that our minds have eyes? Your spirit man has eyes. Your spirit man sees. Last week, we finished, I, I finished personally. Pastor Christine and I finished putting a whole fence in our backyard. And uh, it, it, it took the whole backyard. It took retaining walls because we have like a little lagoon back there, a little drainage thing but two years ago I would sit to have coffee and get in the word in my yard and be in the spirit and while I'm in the spirit I'm seeing my fence and the fence is is break is it's it's old vines grew on that fence to pull the fence apart you can actually see outside it's a miracle my Dogs didn't get lost, but they did get out quite a few times. But I was, I would get up to study the word of God and pray in the Holy Ghost. In the spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost. And I would see my fence. Now my physical would say, yeah, that fence needs fixing. But I knew that if I get back in the spirit, I would have more authority and more power to understand his scripture. So I get back in the spirit of God. And I see my fence. The Lord's teaching me something now. Oh, shaka, and I'd pray in the spirit. You know what I'm talking about? You see the fence, and so you start thinking, well, if you get your eyes on the fence, you get away from the spirit. But I'm learning something. I'm learning something. Oh, shaka, brisikiti. And then I said, fence, you're going to be made new. Sika, bro, shaka, tarabasata. Fence, you're going to be made new. Ribo, sakata. What's happening? Physical now is operating from the spiritual now. The spiritual is connecting. Spiritual is taking more authority over the physical, but yet I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it. Oh, I'm aware. I'm praying the Holy Spirit. I'm praying the Holy Ghost. Has my have a, a cup of coffee, and, I, and I'm drinking my coffee, just worshiping the Lord. Oh, Rabasata, see that fence? Fence, you're going to be made whole in Jesus' name. Last week, the fence was made whole. One of the easiest jobs that it was so easy, so easy. I, you, your pastor, and pastor's wife did it we were in the trenches i love working i love well, i'm telling you we were digging we were digging we were digging and it was the easiest thing beautiful fence now i can get out there with my coffee and my word 
and pray in the Holy Ghost. And I say, thank you, Father. Oh, thank you. Shaka bro, thank you, Lord. Oh, shaka bro. Ah, si bro. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now, what's happening? Spirit now is manifested. The natural is manifested by the spiritual things. And the Lord started showing me something. He says, your spirit man sees just like your senses see. And my church needs to see their senses through their senses and see that they are somebody. And when they're in the spirit, pray it through. When in their spirit, see themselves just like that fence. See themselves new, renewed. Amen. See yourself healed. You've got problems in your body. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Body be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, there's a breakthrough that happens. Breakthroughs that happen in our life. But see, the enemy always wants you to see the negative, so you're always looking at the negative, and you're not praying in the spirit more. You're always looking in the negative. You see the problem. You see the mountain. You see the, the trees. The, the, you see the forest, and you see all the, the problems, or you see the mountains, and you have the Holy Spirit in you. You have the power of God in you, but you see the problems. You see the mountains of debt. You see the sickness. You see uh, the unbelieving family. You see the unbelieving families and this. Oh, you see that. You see that. You see that. But you're not. You can't fix it. Come on. Help me out, somebody. You can't fix it in the natural. You can't fix it in the natural. Although the physical sees it, you cannot fix it in the natural. You got to get the Holy Ghost in it. Got to get the Holy Ghost in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Get the Holy Ghost in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Get the Holy Ghost in it. Look at me, church. Get the Holy Ghost in it. Get the Holy Ghost in it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's look at something. Go with me to 2 Corinthians. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Come on, church. Uh, it, it's, it's in me by the Spirit of God. And I'm asking the Holy Spirit to bring it out as he wants it. Hallelujah. My mind, my mind, my mind is just full, but my heart is fuller. Hallelujah. Amen. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Let's, let's get into the word. I want you to hear this. Remember, you're, you're, you're positioned already by the Holy Ghost. You're positioned already. And the church says, yes, sir. We're positioned already by the Holy Ghost. Now comes the word that's going to lead you right into that. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Yes. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Now notice this. The fourth chapter, verse 3. Question, is it possible that our mind sees? It is. It's possible. Let's prove it. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. You're not lost, right? You're not lost. So the gospel is not hid from you. If the gospel is hid, then you've got to give your life to Jesus. If you cannot see the gospel, cannot understand the gospel, then you need to surrender yourself like we did earlier. We surrendered ourselves. But you really need to give your whole life to the Lord. Whole life. Don't live in two worlds. Live in, live in his world. Live in his kingdom. Amen. It says, but if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Thank God we're not lost. So we don't have the gospel hid. In whom? The God, the devil of this world, hath blinded the minds of them that believe not. Now, let's stop here for a moment. The devil blinded their sight in the mind because they're unbelievers. So if the devil has blinded you in some areas, you've got to get a hold of believing the word of God. Believe the word of God. Say, Father, I believe the word even though my mind doesn't understand it right now. I believe the word. Come on, church. Too many people are wanting to believe the word without God. And you can't believe the word without God. You cannot see the word until you allow God in your life, in your family, in your children, in your marriage, in your finances, until you get God in it, until you get, get the word of God in it. Then your eyes see. You see, hallelujah, amen. You see, if you cannot see yourself the way Jesus see, sees you, then there's something wrong with the gospel in you. Amen. amen. Now get a hold of this. You position yourself today. Now, God's going to lead you now. This is so powerful now. 
You've already positioned yourself. The Holy Spirit positioned you. He turned you around this morning, turned you around to the right place. Now, hear the word of the Lord so that you can move into that position. And notice this. If the God of this world hath blinded the minds which believe not, lest the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The gospel, by believing the gospel, opens you up to see the full image of God. Look at that word, image. Do you see that word, image? Image, image of God should shine unto them. In other words, image of God is the fullness of God on you. The fullness of God on you. See, he wants you to have his fullness on you. What for, Pastor? So that it can shine on the unbelievers. Unbelievers can see something. They cannot see the gospel because you have the gospel. But they can see something. They can see image of God coming out of you. The world sees God on you, but they don't understand the gospel. Because the God of this world has blinded them. And if you have the gospel, you have Jesus coming out of you. It is an image of the almighty God standing on you. The image of the almighty God with you. It's the image. Now, if you have an image, see what the devil sees on you. Get a hold of that. See what the devil sees on you now. What does the devil see on you? The image of God. See what the devil sees on you. The image of God. See what the devil sees on you, Jesus. See what he sees. He's reminded of the cross every time he sees you. He's scared of you when you put your little toes on the floor. He's scared of you when you walk up and down the road. He's scared when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Because now we are a, now get a hold of this, we are a multi-dimensional being. Come on, church. <laughs> You're a multi-dimensional being. He sees you physical, but he also sees you spiritual. And that's what the world is looking for. They see a multi-dimensional people, but they can't understand it because the gospel is hid from them. They don't know the gospel, but they see something about you. They see Jesus on you. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why you've got to believe the word. Believe the word. If you're having a problem with believing the word, then it's something wrong with you accepting Jesus. Amen. See, when you accept Jesus, you allow him to come into you. And when he comes into you, he gives you the word, and the word changes you. And when the word changes you, you start illuminating God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, the image of God. The image of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we fear no man, no devil, no bear, no devil, no dog, whatever. We fear no nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we have the word of God on us. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. See, this will take you away from fear. This will pull you away from fear. Because you, the moment fear tries to put a little sliver of a problem on you, you immediately rise up with the word of God and destroy fear because fear has to bow to the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? So in other words, it's possible that our minds can be blinded. Is it possible, Pastor, that Christians can be blinded? Well, if you don't believe the word, it's possible that you can be blinded. And if you're blinded, you can be a Christian with no power. You can be a Christian with no image of God. You can be a Christian with no authority on this earth. Why? Because you're blinded just like the rest that don't see the gospel. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. We have to believe the word. Hallelujah. Amen. See, when I was drinking coffee, studying the word, praying in the Holy Ghost, my physical was alert. My physical was alert. Oh, shakar ribika fence needs for fixing. Shukar rabasata. Oh, the air condition. Kur rabasata. Oh, shakata. Oh, thank you, Father, for the rule. Oh, shaka. What's going on? You see, you see, I'm not letting the physical rule my spirit, man. Amen. Now, this is what happens to many Christians. They're out there drinking coffee, 
get in the Word, and all of a sudden they see the roof. Oh, the roof needs fixing. Oh, the fence needs fixing. Oh, the dog broke his leg. Oh, the air conditioning. Oh, what's happening? Fear now is coming in now. And now you're starting to figure this out, trying to figure out how that's going to be fixed, how the fence is going to be fixed in the natural, how the roof is going to be fixed in the natural, how the broken dog's leg is going to be fixed in the natural. Do you see what I'm saying? You're starting to figure it out. You're start and then you keep your eyes on her, but you're a Christian. But you're a believer. And you worship the Lord, but you have so much weight on you because of all the things that you're trying to fix in the physical. I want to tell you something. The way to get the things of the physical fixed is get back into the spirit and let the spirit get on the physical. Hallelujah. Come on. Let the spirit get on the physical. Hallelujah. Amen. Start speaking the word over your fence. Start speaking the word over the roof, over the dog, over whatever it may be. Start speaking the word. Hallelujah. Amen. The word. Change the natural. By the fist, by the spiritual, hallelujah, amen. Change it. Change the visible by the invisible, hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. You're a spiritual being, hallelujah, amen. You're a multi-dimensional being. Multi-dimensional being. You're not just like your neighbor that's an uh, unbeliever. You're not like your, your boss that's an unbeliever. You can never be like him if you have the image of God on you. He has to change and convert to be more like Jesus and like you. Amen. Do you see who we are, church? We're mixing a world, but we don't pull ourselves from that because we don't know who we are in that world. But we're people of God. Possessing a spirit. Living in a body, having a soul. Our senses are, are operating in the physical, but now we have the spiritual man directing our senses now. Amen. That's why Jesus says, Jesus told his friends and his family, Lazarus is not dead, he is just sleeping. See, he was operating in the spirit. His sister and his mother and all that were operating in the flesh. Oh, Lazarus has been dead, he's been dead four days and his body stinks. Jesus said, no. Didn't I, I tell you that I am the resurrection? Did I not tell you he shall resurrect? But we believe God. We believe God in the last resurrection. He said, no. Nah. That's why when he spoke to Lazarus, he used the physical controlled by the spiritual. The spiritual was Lazarus not dead. His spiritual said Lazarus is alive. Physical obeyed what the spirit said. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And the physical obeyed the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. This is who we are. This is who we are. Hallelujah. Oh, pastor, I'm in debt. We'll start speaking by the spirit of God over your debt. Pastor, I, 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 I'm not making enough money. Well, start speaking the spirit over the natural. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's look at something. Now, look at 2 Corinthians now. Well, let's go, let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Are you with me, church? Listen, listen to what it says. Paul said, uh, he said, you, you have to immediately start training your physical. Start training your physical. Your senses, your, your, your five senses believe that you have a sixth sense, and that's a sense of faith. But notice what he says in, in 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. Jesus, you're so real to us. Cast down imaginations. Cast down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. See, this is a training you have to cast down imaginations. Remember, imaginations is an image. Just like God is in us as a full image of God on us, we got to cast down anything contrary to the image of God. Cast down everything contrary. God says you're the head, you need to cast down the tail. God says you're blessed coming in. You need to cast down the, the, the opposite saying, oh, I'll never have anything. You need to speak it. Why? Because see, now your senses is aligning with your, phys your spirit. Casting down all imaginations. Pastor, where does imaginations come from? Your mind. 
if we never practice and never control our mind, we're always going to allow the mind to dictate to you and we'll, ha we'll have no power in the spirit. So in other words, we have to cast down those thoughts. Do you know every day, cast down ungodly thoughts. Cast them down. Cast down, you know, it's amazing. You, ca you have the authority to cast down anything that is ungodly. Cast it out of your mind at that very moment. Pastor, why? Because you're allowing yourself to know what true is the true image that you should be speaking. Cast down imaginations. Oh, cast down all those things. Learn, train yourself. Or have your, have your spouse or have an accountability partner that will cast those imaginations down. Tell your, tell, your, tell your accountable partner what you're always imagining and have that Holy Ghost partner tell you how to cast it down. But see, you're the judge of your own life. You're the judge of what you think and hear. You can, you can say, well, I know the word, but you know what? If you can't control what you have in here and you know the word, something's wrong. But if the word is in you, the first thing that's going to come out of you when you have a wrong imagination is the word of God. The word of God is going to transfer that. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you see what I'm saying? No word in you. When the opportunity comes, you have no way to cast down imaginations. When you have the word in you and problems come, you have the word rising up in you. Hallelujah. Amen. See, it's good to have plenty of word in you so that when you do need the word, it'll rise up in you. Hallelujah. If you have no word in you and you, have it, and you come to a position where you need to be saved through something and the word's not there, you're in limbo, brother. You're sick. You're hurt. You're dying. Amen. If you believe Jesus heals, then we have our heart to know he heals even when I have a headache. He heals. Even when I stub my toe in the middle of the night, he heals. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. He heals. Amen. I remember we all went to a pizza place, Bo and all of us. I think it was downtown after the, uh, the Joel Osteen night. We all went down there and I told Bo, Bo, listen, I got a bump on my I risk. And Bo said, I got a bump on my finger. And we talked about the bump all night long. Right, Bo? We got on the YouTube. He said, this is what the bump. This was, he was look, we were looking at YouTube's how to get rid of all this bump and trying to get this. I told my wife, and I got this bump, and it's getting bigger. It's bigger. bigger and, I, and I'm talking about this bump. But, but, but my spirit, man, is not there. Just my physical. My physical is seeing this bump. And I'm thinking, oh, no. What does this bump mean? Oh, what does that bump mean? I started seeing the doctor using a syringe, like Bo said. He used a syringe and pulled that fluid out. I said, oh, I don't like syringes. Oh, I got to go find me a doctor that could do it lightly. Oh, 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 oh. I caught myself. I said, you foul spirit of imagination. I break your power now. Got some saliva on my finger in the bathroom. Put some good saliva on there. Hallelujah. And put my finger on that bump. And I said, bump. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. You're not welcome on this body, this man of God. You go now. Hallelujah. Amen. And I thank the Lord. I thank the Lord. And we were at lunch one day, and all of a sudden, I noticed my watch is looser. I said, praise God. And the bump is gone. Do you see what happened? Spirit man rose up over the physical. Physical knew, knew it was a bump. Physical talked about the bump, got on YouTube. Right, Bo, we got on YouTube, learned about the bump. Found out how the world gets rid of the bump. And, and I was worried about the bump. Devil put a little tumor there. You got a little tumor. Oh, you lying devil, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. What did I do? I switched over to the Spirit of God, used the Word of God that was in me, and guess what? The bump is gone. And now it's a testimony of what God can do. Amen. So if you got a bump on your body, lay your hands on it. Hallelujah. Amen. Got a bump on it that's not normal. Lay your hands on it. Spit on your hand if you have to. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to cast down imaginations. But I was too hungry that night with Bo to eat pizza to cast down that imagination. We just wanted to know about the bump. Amen. But he says you cast down every imagination that exalts itself above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Above the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That means anything. Cast it down, anything. Now, now let's look at something. Go with me all the way to Genesis. Look at, look at Genesis, the, the sixth chapter. Oh, Jesus, he's so good. We, it, the, can the mind see? The mind can see. The mind can see. The eye of the spirit can see. Hallelujah, amen. The mind of the spirit can see. Hallelujah, amen. Genesis, the, the sixth chapter. Jesus is so good, so real to us right now. 
So real to us. He's speaking to us. Amen. Genesis, uh, the uh, Jesus, the sixth chapter. Verse 5. This, this is after Noah is getting off the boat. Verse 5 says, did I say 5? All right. And God saw that the wickedness of men, man was great on earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil. Look at that word, continually. Continually. So it's possible to have your heart always evil, continually having wrong imaginations. Do you see what I'm saying? See, is it possible that a born-again believer can have an evil imagination if he doesn't believe the gospel? And the gospel cannot lead him then always that person can have evil imaginations, evil thought pattern, evil thinking, always thinking negative, always thinking against things, always think, oh, poor me. I, you know, Bobby said, I ain't poor no more. Amen, I like that. He took it from a great preacher, right? I ain't poor no more. Hallelujah. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Come on, church. Come on, church. Is it possible? See, Jesus said from this, from this time of mankind, it, it grieved him. It grieved him that everybody was walking around evil imaginations always, 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 always. And this is the heart of the devil. The devil wants you always to live in an evil imagination, always evil thinking. If you're always evil thinking, you've got to put a stop to it because it will be continual and it will lead you astray. That's why earlier many people are going the wrong way in life because the evil imagination is leading them astray. But God had a promise you today. He promised you that if you believe me in my word, I'll position you today. Today, I'll position you to go in the right way. And now the word will help you know where you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at another one. Evil imaginations. Go with me to the eighth chapter. Not far from there, the 8th chapter, verse 21. Listen to what it says. Oh, this will help your future, ladies and gentlemen. This will help your decision making. This will help what you need to make a decision in life. This will help if you're looking for the right bride or the groom or whatever it may be. Oh, come on, church. This will help you. Hallelujah. Yeah. The world is going one way. Genesis, what did I say about 8? Thank you. Genesis 8, verse 21, and the, Lord, and the Lord smelled a sweet Savior. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imaginations of, man heart, of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite it anymore in every living thing and everything living as I have done. Now, this is, this is already looking to Jesus Christ. Right here. I promise you. Do you know to fulfill that promise? It's happening to this day. That's why he's given us grace and mercy to get rid of our imaginations, our evil imaginations. A born again Christian should not have evil imaginations. Should not imagine or, or contemplate, uh, concentrate on something wrong, evil. Come on church. Jesus said when a man, he said when a man looks at a woman and lust after her, he sinned in his heart. See, the looking of an imagination brought a sin to his heart. So in other words, thank God for Jesus Christ. Come on, church. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Our evil imaginations are now, are now deliverable, able to be delivered. We're able to be delivered from it by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So that means we're born again believers. I have the blood of Jesus on my mind, on my heart. I don't have evil imaginations. I think the way Jesus thinks. I want to talk the way Jesus talks, and I want to see the way he wants me to see. Hallelujah. Amen. No longer evil imaginations. Don't even think that there's a sign of sickness on your body if you have Jesus on your life. Don't even see yourself broken and poor. Don't see yourself. If, if you want to see yourself through the word, see Jesus in the word and you'll see yourself greater. Hallelujah. Amen. See yourself living in the fullness of God. See yourself blessed of God, having all the money. Come on, church. See yourself rich. See yourself with plenty of money for the gospel. Hallelujah. See yourself as mighty. Hallelujah. You may be driving a broken down car, but you get a hold of God. You're seeing what, what you see in the spirit will become visible when you see the way Jesus wants you to see. Amen. See yourself. 
raise your standard now to believe who you are. Amen. Is it possible the old way of living messed up your imagination now as a Christian? It's possible. But I would say this, many of us are still thinking the way we used to think as a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. Doing the same thing. Wearing the same thing. Come on, church. Believing the same thing. Talking the same thing. Hallelujah. Eating the same thing. Even the eating can change. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Believe yourself. See yourself. Amen. Remember that fence. That fence was broken down, man. It, it would have cost us thousands of dollars if I would have hired a, a professional. But God gave me a professional. Amen. Think about that. I saw that fence, and, and, and for years, the people who owned the house before me had that fence messed up. But you know, the only thing that caused me from not fixing that fence was a lack of finances and the willpower. But do you know when I started speaking the word of God, started seeing that fence the way I see it now, it, the way I see it now in the natural is the way I saw it in the spirit. I saw it. I saw it the way God, oh, and God gave me wisdom. God gave me stamina. You know what I'm talking about, people that work on uh, outdoors in the, in the dirt, carpentry. The Lord built it. And do you know what? The same amount of money that was in our bank back then was the same amount of money that was in our bank now. But yet God furnished the materials, the right timing, the right price, the right, oh, the right wisdom. And it was done less than three days. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. God was on it. Why? Because the eye of faith, the seeing, the speaking through the supernatural over the, 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 the physical came possible. Try it, ladies and gentlemen. Speak the Spirit of God over the physical. Speak the Spirit of God over the physical. Amen. Let's look at another scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm getting all excited. Praise God. It's good. God is so real to us. Amen. Let's go to Genesis, the fourth chapter now. Listen to the fourth chapter. No, no, excuse me. I, I said it wrong. The 11th chapter. The 11th chapter. Oh, Jesus. Listen to what it says in the 11th chapter. In verse 6. Listen to this. This is where the nations were birthed. Nations were birthed. If you ever want to know how the nations, nations were birthed, it was birthed right after Noah. Now notice what it says. In the 11th chapter, verse 6, and here all the people after Noah multiplying and multiplying and multiplying and the lord uh verse five and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build it and the lord said listen to what he said behold the people is one they have all one language and this they begin to do and nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do let us go down and confound them so that they may not be understand one's another speech. So from that moment on, they were scattered. Now, look at this. Jesus, now, this is coming from the, the mind of God. Listen to what it says in verse 6. And the Lord said, this is his mind. He's saying, he's speaking. Behold, the people is one, and they have one language. And this they begin to do, and nothing will restrain them which they have imagined to do. Listen, imagine to do will come, will bring the full manifestation of what one language says. But we're a multidimensional people. We don't speak one language. We speak another language, which is the language of God. Are you with me, church? Listen to this. Listen to this. If we're going to speak like the world speaking, then you might as well get ready for break, a, a, a financial break in your life. If you're speaking the way the world's speaking, then you might as well get ready for disaster. If you're speaking the way the world says about the economy, then you might as well get ready for the economy problem in your life. But now, we're a people that have another language. Come on, church. Another language. Hallelujah. And we imagine to do what he wants us to do by his word. So if we have the word of God in us, then our imagination starts speaking his word. Hallelujah. His word. And we start saying what he says. And we imagine to do what he says. Hallelujah. Amen. See, we don't speak like the world says. 
I choose not to speak like the world. I force myself to speak not like the world. I correct myself every time. I try to imagine like the world does. And I win all the time. I win. I win because when I stop and correct myself, I switch over to the Spirit of God. And it brings me higher. Hallelujah. Amen. The world's all oh, the economy's falling apart. Pastors say, oh, churches are not receiving the, any longer like they used to. I refuse to speak like the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I just, can I just, uh, just bring blessing to you from God right now? You're pleasing God when you tithe and sow. Amen. He, he's proven to every other pastor that's speaking by the world that it doesn't matter how many people you have in the church, you can have believers and believers will conquer. Believers conquer, hallelujah. Believers have finances. Believers are blessed, hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. People say, well, well, pastor, how are you doing with such a small congregation? The word way. The word way. I just believe the word. Tell them the word. They believe the word. Guess what? We all prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. God blesses us. We pay the rent. We pay the bills. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. Everything, everything we owe, everything you see here is paid for. Hallelujah. Everything, everything. We owe no one nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. Even these little lights here. Hallelujah. Amen. Even that camera, even being on the world internet, on the world market, hallelujah, amen. See, God provides. Well, pastor, teach us how you do it. The word. You teach your people the word and get them out to, away from thinking the world. Get them into the word. God will prosper them. Do you know when you tithe, God prospers you? When you tithe and you sow, God prospers you. Oh, it's not going to hurt me if you quit tithing. It's not going to hurt me. Because God takes care of me, hallelujah, amen, amen. I live like God tells me to live, hallelujah, amen. But this is for your benefit. If you don't believe tithing, then it's not going to work for you. If you don't believe giving, it's not going to work for you. And if you don't believe in tithing and giving, then you don't believe in the word because the word is full of tithing and giving, hallelujah. Come in. Can you say amen, hallelujah, amen, praise God. Come on, church. Now, look at this. Go with me to 2 Corinthians now. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Are you with me? Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me, hallelujah. Just praise the Lord right now. Amen. Oh, God is so good. Notice what he says in 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Oh, Jesus. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Look, listen to what it says in verse 16. Hallelujah. For which cause, verse 16, for which cause we faint not. That's you and me. We don't faint. But though our outward man perishes yet, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. See, right now you're being renewed day by day. For our light affliction, I'll get to that for a moment, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. By you training yourself while your outer man is perishing and your inner man is being built up, if you will just train yourself, these little things that you're going through by training yourself, they're only just a little bit light affliction, just a little bit light. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Even though you feel sick, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. That little light affliction of being sick will have more weight for you in glory, meaning that your breakthrough, you will know that you made a breakthrough. Do you know, I, that's why I can preach freedom up here. I can preach debt freedom. I can preach finances. I can, I can preach healing. Why? Because, see, it works for me. And if it works for me, it can work for you. And so all that I've been through, it's for a benefit for you also. Come on, church. That little bump going away, it's for a benefit for you that may have a bump. <laughs> Amen. If you're broke, and, and I, I've been through brokenness financially. If you're broke now, it's only a light little light of moment affliction because it made me free, and it'll make you free too. Hallelujah. Amen. God's no respecter of people. He'll do it for you. Amen. He'll give you things. He'll bless you with things. Hallelujah. Amen. So what you're going through now, it's only but a little light affliction. Say it with me. What I'm going through now, just a little light affliction. But it'll be, it'll be wonderful once it's over. And it's going to be over. Amen. Hallelujah. Now look, notice what it says. Notice what it says now. Now I want you to look at this. Verse 18. This is the seeing part. The mind can see. Now notice this. While we look, 
Didn't say while you read, while you look. While I work, no. While you look, well, while I, I sleep, no. While you look. While you look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Seen from the invisible world are eternal. Seen from the physical is temporal. Temporal. Everything is temporal now. What you're seeing is temporal. So you better get used to seeing the eternal. Believe the eternal. Believe the invisible. I see the invisible working in me now. I see myself as a man of God. I see myself as a man of Holy Ghost man. I see myself as a man that uses wisdom. I see myself as a man that has all the blessings of the Lord. What are you doing? I'm speaking the invisible over the visible right now. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm a rich man. Although my bank only has one dollar, I'm speaking the word of God over my finances. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm blessed. I'm above. I, I'm blessed. Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, even though I'm visibly got a dollar. Hallelujah. I'm speaking the word of God over that visible, which it will be physical, which is physical, which then it will be spiritual and invisible. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to think about this for a moment. Do you know that when you get healed, there's always a manifestation? The outward manifestation. But see, we rely on the outward manifestation, which, which is a sign to the world, but you don't rely on the outward manifestation. You rely on faith. Father, I thank you that I'm healed now. You're not, you're not wanting a, a, a visible sign, no. You're believing the invisible. Now, the world cannot believe you. You can tell your friend, I'm healed. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm healed. No, you still got the pain. No, I, I'm healed. But the day comes that that unbeliever will see the visible. And the visible, that, that person will say, oh, I see it. I see it. I see. But you'll say, it's about time. I've been seeing it since I first prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. I've been seeing it since I first prayed. I believe. See, we're people that believe now the invisible. Amen. Just like that, just like that fence. In the spirits, the spirit saw it in the visible. And if the visible saw it, if my eyes saw it in the visible, then that means God was going to manifest it soon. And it didn't matter to me. I believed it was already done. I believed it so much that when I drank coffee, I saw the fence already fixed, even though the neighbor saw it falling down. I saw it fixed. Amen. I saw it the way I, the way I know it now. Amen. Can I tell you this? Even our dog saw it. <laughs> Amen. I spoke it and they heard it. And you stay away from that fence. You stay away from that brand new fence. And whenever they go by that fence, they'll look at me. <laughs> Amen. See, they believe me more than they believe the physical fence falling down. <laughs> Amen. They believed. Why? Because they heard you speak it. I tell my wife, honey, can you see that beautiful fence? She got into the spiritual with me. I can see it. Oh, I see it. I see it. bushes. I see the bushes growing on there. Amen. I see the roses. Amen. Lord, we need a green thumb miracle. But anyway, I see it. I see it. I see it. Amen. I see it. Let me give you an example. Do you see things the way you want them to be? There's something about people, uh, something about people that remodel homes. How do you say that, Pastor Christine? Interior decorators. Interior decorators, you, you can hire interior decorator, you can tell what that in, you can tell that interior decorator what you want. That interior decorator he sees it. The scene is powerful for the interior decorator. They see. So they see it first. And, and, and it's amazing. Uh, realtors, Christians out here, but a realtor can, a realtor tell you if you can see yourself in this house, then that house is yours. But if you can't see yourself in this house, don't even buy it. Isn't it amazing? That's what they tell people. If you're, can you see yourself? In, can you see your children here? Can you see your husband here? Oh, oh yeah, I can see my, I can see my daughter. Oh, oh, what are they doing? They're seeing something that you don't see. Amen. See, they're into the invisible. But notice this, but now that you're full of God, 
and you have the Holy Ghost on you, now you can see the invisible in a greater form, in a greater light. That's eternal, hallelujah. That's great and mighty, hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. You can see things. So I'm encouraging you. Start seeing yourself like the Word sees you. See yourself when you put on your makeup. Shave your face. Whatever you do, guys and girls, you see yourselves the way the Word sees you. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't you invite the devil in your shaving mirror. Or your makeup place. Hey, Amen. Don't you mind the devil get out. Because see, you'll be seeing what the devil wants you to see. Amen. Are you with me, church? Yes. Hallelujah. You that are wanting to be married, see your mate now. Yes. See your mate now. You should know how your mate should be. Speak it. Need in a car? Speak it and see yourself driving a car. Come on, church. Let's get away from all this mess that people say, oh, well, you're just a wealth, uh, prosperity preacher that believes in materialism. No, I'm just telling you it's time for you to get ahead of God. Get with God, in, ahead with Him. Hallelujah. Amen. See yourself blessed. Amen. Come on, church. Amen. Come on, church. See yourself blessed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's go to Romans, the eighth chapter. I think we made a breakthrough now. I think you know what the Lord is saying now in your life. And nobody has to go to your home to tell you. You know, you know, you know. Amen? Romans, the eighth chapter. Look at verse 5. Now, notice this. In verse 5, look at it so clearly. For they that are after the flesh. This is, this is away from God. They that are after the flesh do Yes, A5. For they that are after the flesh do mind, there's that word mind, the scene, the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. You see this? So, so, so ask yourself, why do you want to prosper? For the things of the spirit. Come on, church. See, that's a good, that's a good quiz. Why do I need a new fence? For the things of the Spirit. Why do I need a new house? For the things of the Spirit. You see what I'm saying? It, now it starts changing your whole attitude about your thought pattern. Your thought pattern. Remember, if we're only going to think about the flesh, then that's fleshly. And that's, that's carnal. But those that see after the Spirit, can you say amen? The spiritual things. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now notice this. We have to fix our minds. Now, this is where you're going to have to start thinking now. Our mind and our will connects us to the things of the Spirit. Now, this is where you have to really think about it. The mind and the will is a connector. I'll give you a good example. All of us right now pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on, just pray in the Holy Spirit. We know how to pray in the Holy Spirit. Are you praying in the Holy Ghost? All right, now stop. You controlled yourself. Now, some believe that the, in order to pray in the Holy Ghost, you've got to feel... Uh, you got to feel the Holy Ghost. He'll come in and give it to you. No, no, no. That, that's not proper. Proper is you're a spiritual man full of the Holy Ghost. So therefore, you can pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Okay, now, stop. What made you stop? Oh, first of all, you heard pastors say, but no. You had the, the will to stop. So the will is a connector to the things of God. Now let's submit to the Spirit of God now. Pray in the Holy Ghost, all of us. Now notice this. What are we doing? We're, we're willing to switch over to the Spirit of God. Just like, just like today, we're following the lead of the Holy Spirit. And then Jennifer said, okay, now you may be seated. What happened? She switched from the Spirit to the senses to see. The men going fishing. That senses. Right? Now notice this. We switched. Why did you switch? Because we chose to switch. There's a connector right there. You choose to connect. So if that's possible, why can't we choose to see in the spirit and choose to see in the physical? 
I see Lorenzo in the physical. Oh, but in the spirit. Shambratisi. I see him as a man of God, full of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I'm getting in the spirit now. You see what I'm saying? Oh, I, 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 I see, I see, I see Jeff in the spirit. Oh, shakara. I see Jeff in the spirit. Oh, shaka. What am I doing? I'm switching. I'm choosing to switch into the spirit now. Oh, shikabrosata. What happens? I choose to switch back, not seeing him in the spirit. I see him sitting there with his wife. This is a problem with many believers. If they can switch and pray in the spirit, then why can't they switch and seem from the physical to the spirit? Amen. Come on, church. I see Bo. Oh, Shubri Shakaramba. Mighty man of God. Mighty steward of God. A mighty powerful man of God. Oh, I, I want to stay here for a moment. I want to stay here for a moment. And Bo says, yes, please keep staying there. Hallelujah. Did you see that, Bo? Did, you, did anybody see that? Come on. Why didn't you see it? Because you're hearing me. But why don't you choose to make a will to see what I'm seeing? Come on. Let's see Pastor Christine. Oh, Shabros, a woman of God full of the Holy Ghost. Come on, church. See in the Spirit. A woman full of God, full of the Holy Ghost. Holy before God, full of power. Oh, Jesus. Now, notice this. If we stay in the Spirit, then we start seeing the way God wants us to see her. But the problem in the church lies I just see Pastor Christine. I just see her. That's all. She just, she just, she just, I, I, and I know, wait, 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 wait. Well, now you're going into the flesh. Flesh is speaking, right? And that's what the devil wants the church, to stay in the flesh. I see Sister Penny full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Come on. She even sees herself. Amen. She said, keep seeing. <laughs> Amen. Oh, see yourself. Now, I'm not talking about vain imaginations. I'm not talking about mind over matter. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm not talking about uh, positive thinking, positive speaking. Oh, that's a bunch of hogwash. I'm speaking a spiritual man seen through the eyes of the Spirit. You're spiritual people, hallelujah. You're spiritual people. You're spiritual people. Jesus sees you spiritual. He sees you full of light. Your image, the image of God shining through you. And that's what I see. Oh, Sinji, I see that on you. Oh, I see it on Sinji. I really do see it now on Sinji. Hallelujah. Amen. See, that's what the world recognizes when you walk into their dark room. There's something about that man coming in this room. There's something about that young man. Oh, there's something about that person. That's where the favor comes. That's where the blessings follow. That's where the blessings and the grace and the mercy comes and you have the anointing of God. Now think about it. You live in a physical, are you with me? You live in a physical world, but demonstrating the invisible. Walking in the invisible. Walking in the power of God in the invisible. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, church. We're a tribe being. Oh, we're multidimensional. Hallelujah. Amen. Multidimensional. Look at me. See Jesus and see pastor. See Jesus, but see pastor. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why Jesus told his disciples, no, no one after the flesh. I tell the men that I go fishing. You know, <laughs> we go fishing. We, we, we have shorts on. No t-shirts. They, they see me after the, they don't see me after the flesh. Amen. Of course, they see my muscles, right? Lord, you see my muscles when I go, when I go fishing. You're, you see my muscles. I'm in shorts and no shirt and I'm flexing them, you know. They see me. They, 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 see, you, you, they see me in the flesh, right? They see me in the flesh, but they don't know me as the flesh. They know me as pastor, the man of God. That's how they knew Jesus. They were walking with Jesus. They ate with Jesus. Jesus slept and he might have snored just like I do. I don't know. But see, they, they saw him not into the flesh because they saw him as a man of the spirit. When we eat fellowship here, we eat. We, we, I know how much Bo eats. I know how much Lorenzo. Jeffrey, oh my God. I, he's, a, he's a vacuum cleaner. Amen. And then on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, no, don't you think I don't know you eat too? I heard you eat a lot. Katie. <laughs> she used to trick me. She, I'm not hungry. I'm not. I heard she ate a lot. 
But do you know what? Even though I know her in the flesh, I see her the way Jesus sees her. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. If the church can, can move into seeing the way Jesus sees, it'll alleviate all the division, the problems. Satan will lose his throne in the church because Jesus will take over the throne. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you see, you see, church, now, now we're starting to see something. We're starting to see something. Listen, you're a spiritual being. You're a spirit first. You have a body which has a soul. Your body is, is decaying like the Bible says day, day by day, but your inner man day by day is being renewed. The inner man that is being renewed is a person that is always conscious of fixing himself or herself always before God. Every day, conscience of fixing myself. Today, Jesus, I'm more like you. Today, oh, put a smile on the people now. Hallelujah. When you once had a frown out there. Oh, uh, uh, I'm learning to smile, Jesus. <laughs> I'm learning to give. Oh, do you know that? It's amazing when you have more of God in you. You run across people that you just want to hug and help manifest my daughter said dad i just blessed a, a, a homeless man oh why it's because jesus is in her more now amen when, when you go to the when you go to the to the to the malls you you demonstrate god and, and and you see the way god sees besides you're in the physical trying to buy something but you're in the spirit now he talks to you you, you have the power to turn him off and on do you know that just like right now, praying the Holy Ghost, we turn the Spirit of God. We pray not in the Holy Ghost, we turn it off. That's what we can do now. We can pray more in the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? Come on, church, pray more in the Holy Ghost. Amen, hallelujah. Oh, let's go to Hebrews. Now go with me to Hebrews. Are you getting something, church? Hebrews, the fifth chapter. Come on. Hebrews, the fifth chapter. We have to learn to develop. Develop ourselves to become more like Him. Focus more on the Word. The word that's powerful and distinct and, di and directional. Focus on them. Listen, the power of concentration is needed today more than ever. Yeah. Power of concentration. Concentrate on who God is in these days that you hear the CNN speaking louder, ABC, NBC, whatever. You hear him more. I can turn, a, we, Andrew can turn the radio on right now and then someone can speak the word of God. You should be concentrated to hear and distinct who you want to listen to. The word, radio or the word. And it's amazing how if you really concentrate on the word, while there's a loud music going on, you hear the word. You hear the word. Amen. See, concentration allows you to hear through all the sound. Now, Hebrews, right? The Hebrews, the fifth chapter, verse 14. Come on, church. Jesus said this, uh, verse 14. Strong meat belongs to them that are what? Mature. Tell me, mature. Strong meat belongs to them that are mature, even those who by reason use of their senses. Exercise to discern both good and evil. Now look at this, look at this. Discern to exercise good and evil by what? The senses. Now I, I'm going to tell you something. I want you to think about this right now. Even though you're fleshly, even though you have the senses, you're a spirit man, but you have the ability to discern and correct your senses. You have the ability. You choose what, how you want to discern what you see. Amen. You choose. You can either choose to see, let's say we want to see Jason through the eye of the spirit or through the eye of the devil, which is evil. Now we choose. I choose. I choose to see you the way Jesus sees you. Pastor, with all my grime and all my mess, yes! I choose to see you the way Jesus sees you. You may see yourself in the grime, but I see you with Jesus. Hallelujah, amen? Pastor, that, that's, that's, that's far out, <laughs> that word, if I may say. That's too far out. Oh, no, that's spiritual. That's spiritual. I choose to see you. Well, how can you see me when you see me the way I am? Because you're a spiritual being, and Jesus loves that spirit in you. Now, the enemy tries to put that mess on you, which is temporal. That's temporal. It'll come off. It'll come off as temporal. But I choose to see you, which is 
eternal, full of God, full of the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. That's what helps me judge people. How can you judge people? I judge them by the word. I judge them by the word. Even though they may not act like the word, I still love them like the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The meanest, ugliest person in the world that you have the license to hate, if you have the license to hate, once you get the word in you, that license revoked. <laughs> I love him like the word. I love you, Jeff. I'm going to use it. I love you, Jeff. I love you, Jeff. I love you. Jeff. I love you. you hear that? Amen. So that, I do love him. Right, man? Amen. The spirit and the physical. I love him. I love him. Amen. Now, who's mean to me in this house? No one's mean to me. Hmm? Brother Bo. <laughs> oh, back there, she's mean to me. Oh, I love her. I love her. I love her. I see her the word, the way the word see. I see her blessed. I see her blessed. I see her blessed. You know how they say the one that says that one is really that one? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. I see them blessed. Amen. Read that again. What does it say? Read that again loud. 14, Hebrews 5, 14. Where are we at here? 5, 14. It says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of us having their senses exercise to discern both good and evil. Senses. What are senses, Bo? Touch, feel, smell, breathe. Five senses. Taste. That means this man, he has the word in him. His senses are controlled by his word. I see, Jeff. I hear, Jeff. <laughs> Amen. 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 You see, this is who we are. Now, I want you to see this. See yourself the way the Word sees you. Get your senses to see. I see myself full of authority. Ooh, Jesus. Full of power. I see myself like the Word says, a devil trembles to mention the name Jesus. I see that. I see, I see that person healed in Jesus. You know, when we get prayer requests, all these prayer requests, you may think, people may think, well, Pastor, do you get so down with all these prayer requests? No, I don't get down. Because I see them the way Jesus has already said in his word. We got one in the, we had a young boy Friday. We're on a date night. Well, we're at a gas station date night, right? I'm calling it date night gas station. We had a nice meal. We got a, 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 a emergency, a young boy got hit in a car accident, messed up his head. Rushed him, life lighted him. We, we, I was pumping gas when we got that. I got into the car. We pray in the spirit. Shakati. Well, well, you know, while we're in the gas, in the parking lot, shikara. We went into the spirit. I don't even know this boy, but I started seeing him. Oh, shakara. Healed in the name of Jesus. Brain be healed. Oh, we started praying for him. What? We're praying for him in the spirit. We don't know him, but we're praying in the spirit. I'm seeing in the spirit. I'm seeing in the spirit. You see what I'm saying? That's who we are. We're spiritual people. I could have said, oh, man. Oh, the funeral. Dear Lord. You see how far the flesh goes? But because I knew the word, I discerned what's evil and good, and I controlled my senses. Senses, you line up with what I'm going to say. Mind, will, and emotion, you follow the word of God now. Amen, Amen church. Let's go to another scripture. Amen. And I'm telling you, this is going to help you. It's going to help you now. It's breaking, making some breakthroughs. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, do you know that just like you go to the gym, how many people go to the gym here? If I was to ask you, why do you go to the gym? Can I ask you, if I was to ask you, why do you go to the gym? Remember, Pastor Biggers, I need to be healthy. Amen. I need to lose weight. Amen. I need to get my heart working. Amen. Now let me ask you a question. Will that, with, this is a good question. It's not, it's not a trick question. Will that help you become more spiritual? It's not a trick question. Think about it before you answer. Can I tell you this? Yes, it'll help you become more spiritual. Why? Because you're disciplining your physical, which is causing you to be, that word, subjection to pain. <laughs> 20 pounds, all right? <laughs> 20 pounds. 
Ah, man, 30 pounds. What are you doing? You're training yourself to be in subjection. So when your spirit man wants to deal with the spiritual things, you are already disciplined. Hallelujah. Amen. Besides that, you feel good. Your body, you know, your body feels good. You feel better. You breathe better. Do you know that? You, you, you get some weight off you. You feel a whole lot better. I'm telling you, I'm not making fun of people. I'm just saying, listen, we walked yesterday two miles, right? Two, two miles. <laughs> Let's go to Jack in the Box. <laughs> Amen. I think John Terry said, Dad, we just, whatever we took out, we put it back on us. Amen. Well, you know, let me tell you something. That was good. Well, how would you say it was good? Because last night I slept such the most beautiful sleep and the Lord spoke to me. He spoke to me what I'm speaking to you now. So that means that exercise helped my physical to make room for my spiritual. Do you see that? Come on, church. Come on. That's why there is a distraction in, in working out. Joining yoga now. Oh, they put yoga to exercise. Have you ever said, come on, sir, you watch out. Get, get away from yoga. That's opening your mind to stuff. You can exercise. Pray. You can exercise and put your earphones on and exercise. Praise God. Get those 20 pounds. You know, don't open your heart to that yoga stuff. Because see, those yoga teachers been taught by the darkness. And they're trying to convert you by manipulation of your body. See, that's why he says mature meat belongs to those who are mature and could discern good, both, and evil. I'm telling you, you get yourself. Now, going back to exercise, it's a great thing. Uh, every time I exercise, man, it puts me on a higher level spiritual, spiritually. People say, oh, Pastor, you're put, trying to put the flesh in. You have no idea what I'm talking about. People say, why well, the flesh and this and that. Listen, if you're a believer of God, you know what the flesh is. If you're a believer of God, you know what the flesh is. Take care of your bodies. Eat well. Uh, listen, listen. If you eat well, you live longer. And you're able to do more for the kingdom of God. So that means if you live longer, you're doing spiritual things, right? So your fleshly is helping your spiritual. Come on, church. If you die young, if you die at 65 or 55 or 45... Your life was cut short. I'm sorry, it was cut short. The kingdom suffered because you left. Amen. So why not take care of your body? Don't break bones. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, let the Lord show you how to, how to handle your body. Amen. Drink more milk. Do you drink milk? You really, really do you drink milk? Drink more and more milk. Is it, is it, is it slim milk? Is it... Invite him good, good milk. That's the spirit from the Lord. I'm, that's the spirit of the Lord. The Lord told me one day my bones were act, acting up, and he said, you drink more milk. I said, ah, started drinking more milk, and guess what? Boy, I'm, I'm flexible now, amen. I'm rubbery, hallelujah, amen. He told me to stay off Diet Coke. Now, I'm telling you, stay off Diet Coke. He said, you stay off that Diet Coke, it'll cripple your bones. I said, but Lord, I'm spiritual. <laughs> Amen. Get off Diet Coke. You see, you got to learn how to eat. Eat well. Amen. Eat well. Get, get some vegetable in you, man. Come on. Take care of your bodies. Breathe well. Stay away from those chocolate cakes. Oh, that's for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church.